This is a real quick video of testing an alternator with a multimeter. You're just gonna test, so we're gonna do a test for diodes, uh, rotor and brushes, and then we're also gonna do a continuity check for the regulator itself. Uh, first, obviously you're gonna need a multimeter. You're gonna need to know what these basic functions are. Uh, the main, the most important one for our case here is the ohms and your diode function. Uh, an ohm symbol just kind of looks like a horseshoe and the diode symbol, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it basically looks like a line with an arrow going through it and then a line in front of it with, the, with a line continuing to go through the side of it. Basically just look for the arrow pointed to the right. Well, first thing we're gonna do is put the multimeter on diode test. As you can see on the screen, it's on diode test. This is just a real basic Fluke 101. They're about $40 on Amazon, eBay, etc. You'll have to remove the cover. There's gonna be three eight millimeter nuts on the back. You can use a screwdriver as well to pop it off. If you can't get it off, just be careful because it is plastic. It's not super hard to break that. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna test the negative diodes. You'll see that there are six uh, soldered or welded connections, depending on the brand of unit you got going on there. Uh, first thing you're going to do is take your positive lead and put it somewhere on the case of the alternator. And then check each individual diode. I don't know if you can see it on the video there. But pretty much your main thing that you're looking for is not to see a well and not to see all zeros or if it's a continuity slash diode test, not to hear a beep. And you can see here that we're between 0.3 and 0.6 on all of the diodes. And then obviously if the diodes are actually bad, you'll see a zero. And that'll tell you if you have a short either internally from the diodes or the stator actually being shorted uh, against either the case or the lamination stack itself, which is what this part is. Well, after you've tested the negative diodes, basically just switch leads in your hands I'm left-handed, so it might be a little bit different for you, but so then you'll be taking your uh, negative lead and basically putting it on the stud of the alternator or somewhere on this positive side of the case. And then again, check all of these points. Mainly again, looking for an OL read or a zero read. From there, now that you've tested all of your diodes and they're okay, you'll switch the multimeter back to an, uh, an ohm setting. This has an auto range set up. Um, some you will have to go between like uh, a two ohm, 20 ohm, uh, 200 ohm kind of setup. Generally the 20 ohm is gonna be all that you need because you're gonna read anywhere between uh, 1.1 and around six to seven ohms. You'll check that reading there. And as you can see, we're auto ranging. There is a coil involved, so even if you do make a little bit of noise, some stuff can make it fluctuate. But right around four ohms. So you know that your brush holder and your uh, rotor are okay, because you have an ohm reading, again, between that range that we spoke about. Um, one thing that, uh, that you can check is to actually, if you read an OL on this uh, between these screws, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna remove the brush holder. And you can see this particular one has two T20 screws. Uh, some brands will use Phillips screws. Just remove those. You obviously can do that by hand. You don't necessarily need an impact to do it, but for the sake of time for the video. This is obviously a good used brush holder. They have two brushes on springs. What you can see when the brush actually starts to wear out is something along this line. And when it gets to that point, what you can see is that it actually will not make contact with these copper strips here, which connect to the coil inside. That's the rotor coil that spins on the inside here. You'll see a no charge situation because of that. So what you're gonna wanna do is obviously then replace the brush holder if that's the case, and then make sure there aren't any crazy grooves going on here. Um, if you do see that, Obviously, you're going to want to check your, your ohms again. So you'll check the two copper strips themselves. 
And you obviously, you should get a lower reading when checking this because you won't have the added resistance of the brush leads. But uh, you can see that this one is about 2.5 to 2.6 ohms. So you know that the rotor is okay. The last thing to check, and this one's mainly for powder coated units. You're essentially gonna wanna make sure that these mounting points are cleaned essentially internally just by doing this and this. And then generally you're just gonna wanna do a continuity test on that. It's gonna kinda look like a little speaker symbol. As long as you have continuity between here and you have some kind of resistance reading that's either one ohm or less, depending on what kind of meter you have. And if it's been zeroed out between for your leads, then uh, you'll be good to go as far as that's concerned. This unit isn't powder coated, so you won't see that resistance in between there. But um, a lot of times what you'll see is a unit be powder coated, but like these mounting points won't be cleaned or internally it won't be cleaned. You'll put it on the alt you'll put an alternator on the vehicle and it won't charge. Um, one thing to do to help with that would be to obviously clean, make sure these surface mounts here are cleaned. And then if you can, remove these through bolt screws and then clean those, especially if it's powder coated or painted. If you have any questions, uh, you can fire away in the comments and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. You guys have a good one.